the hell are you, you aggressive flatulence galactic criminal here? And yes, you did read the title correctly, and the hype is real, even despite what y'all who might have seen my last review to Slipknot might think I used to be a pretty big fan of those guys. And now Alex Terrible has dropped a brand new cover, and not only has he chosen one of the heavier and more memorable songs from an album that some would say is arguably the most iconic new metal album of the 2000s, also the last album of theirs that I've ever gotten, I haven't heard that album, including this track, aside from maybe a few, a few from, in like 15 years. 15 years? So yeah, I am very much excited for the nice little shot of nostalgia that I'm about to receive here. And I, if, if you never heard Alex before, or you never even heard of him before, you are almost certainly in for one hell of a ride. Let's jump into this. Alex Terrible, Slipknot's Disaster Piece with the Pot. Goodbye, so depressing. When the 
bring the wind. Take a look inside. So it's messy. All I have is that, so I'll take you with me. Feel like I'm a race. So kill me just in case. I feel like I'm a race. So kill me just in case. So tell me, just me. <laughs> wow dude that was like that was seriously like hearing this song for the very first time again i said it's been like, like 15 years 14 or 15 years since i've heard that i didn't remember that song as much as i thought i did holy fucking balls <laughs> Again, man, I recall this album being regarded as one of like one of the best like new metal core, whatever you call it, albums of like the early 2000s, especially. Man, there was a lot of bands out at the time doing something similar, doing some other styles of like the new metal genre and core and stuff like that. But this was like an iconic, iconic album, and I had it. But like a couple of years after I would gotten that album, I pretty much strayed away from all the music I had been listening to up until that point, like the new metal stuff, some industrial stuff, and uh, and like hip hop stuff as well, and gone more like straight into the punk and ska and the rock and Billy type stuff for years. For years, I never really looked back on bands like Korn and Slipknot. I never ended up getting any other stuff. Yeah, some singles or whatever would come out, and I would hear them and be like, yeah, just that's not for me anymore. It's not what I'm into. Just but man. Hearing this song, again, after just so long, dude, I mean, I was into these guys. I guess I was a, kind of a death metal fan at the time, too, because just the, this track itself, I, I remembered it being really, really heavy and loving it, but I didn't remember how much, like, death metal influence was in their stuff, especially back then. It was less of the, like, yes, there was, like, the, the new metal stuff with, you know, the scratching and shit like that and the... And like the rhythms and structure of like of new metal, but there was definitely a death metal rhythms and drums and stuff like that, and influence very very heavily in this band. Again, why I don't think a lot of people liked them so much, and again, why I'm not the biggest fan of them anymore because I just I just don't feel that I don't feel that anymore. And I freaking I was gonna say before this, but I didn't, I wanted to get through the preamble pretty much as quickly as I could to get to this to get to this track, but I seem to recall that uh, Alex has said in the past that Slipknot, among other bands, but very much Slipknot was like a, a huge influence on, his, on him and his band, Slaughter to Prevail. And, you know, I was just like, man, thinking he's gonna, there's gonna be passion behind this because I know he loves this band, dude. And just like, man, I have literally never to this day, even when I was a big fan of Slipknot, I never learned the lyrics to any of their songs because the phrasing was like so quick and shit like that and trying to like scream it. I learned like choruses and stuff like that, some of the clean stuff. I was never able to to, to learn to learn the lyrics to, to the to one of their songs. It was just too fast so I never never fucking bothered. So the fact that he could at least it seems for the most part keep up with the um, the lyrical structure of this song is fucking fantastic from what I heard here again. It's been such a long time since I've heard this I didn't even remember how fast the phrasing was and they're like when do you breathe even now this is obviously like this video itself and him with the microphone is not like a one take one shot you know as they recorded it style of vocal thing guaranteed he recorded the best version that he could of this of this track just like on the mic without a camera going got the best uh, the best try i guess at it that he could and then just filmed the video you know, with the with the track playing in the room or something like that, so he can like mount the words properly on video. But another thing about this was the video was fantastic. 
with a great idea they did just for like a one-shot camera thing. Just him in front of the didn't really cut away to another camera. He's like he was on the friggin' meth or something like that, moving in and out. But I feel like it worked with the way that that Alex moves. It's like the cameraman. It feels like he knows Alex. He probably knows him very well. Probably he's filmed a lot of his other stuff and kind of has a feel for what he's gonna do and how he's gonna move. And like they filmed this music video in that way and that style. And again, I've said before, like with that that's the the Alex terrible mask. You just like any head angles and stuff like that, and opening the mouth and stuff. There's just like there's, it's such a cool visual on camera, it doesn't matter what you're doing, but when you're tilting your head and trying to be creepy and stuff, it just makes it that much better, and Alex is very much better at that than I ever have been <laughs> in, in my videos, just, yeah. Man, I forgot how long this song was, too. There was a few long ones on there, too. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't Iowa, like, 15 minutes long? I think it was. The only track on from that album, I think it was People, People Equal Shit, that I've heard within, like, the last year or something. Pretty sure that was from that album. I haven't checked. I think that's the only song from the album that I've heard in probably 14 years. <laughs> that's fucking crazy to me, man. And does anybody else noticing, especially if you've been a fan of Alex for a while, he's been working on his cleans. Especially for this style. For this style for, for, for Slipknot. And maybe it's the fact that he's heard it enough times in the English, whatever, that he's able to match that tone. I have to assume that he's heard it enough times to have memorized the song to be able to sing it the way that he does that he would like have matched the tone singing along with it over the years of having listened to it. And maybe that's why he was able to match the tone here. Or then again, maybe he's been working on his cleans. They've been, I, in the times that I've heard them, they've been kind of like here or there. Um, but I think they were actually pretty decent on here for how much was actually in the song. So yeah, clearly I loved this. I loved the video. Alex is fantastic. I just, I can't wait to hear a brand new song from Slaughter to Prevail as well. So hey, if you guys heard this or hadn't heard this, what did you think of his version of the song? Do you think it's better than Corey's version? Do you think it's on par? Or did you not like it as much? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, there'll be a link in the description for this video, so you want to watch it for yourself full screen for all of you and get the full experience. And as always, have yourself a fantastic evening.